call Gladys. All right. All right. Well, that's that's fine. But be quiet a second. I'm gonna call a friend of mine. <laughs> no. Oh, we're kind of dueling yeah, friends yeah. now. Okay. Fine. Who you got? What you got? Yeah. Let's see. Paul McCartney is busy, but let me see. Hang on a second. All right, Jody. What was that? What was that that you heard about name dropping? <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> you know, you shouldn't name drop. Paul McCartney told me that. <laughs> How are you doing, brother? Uh, well, we got a whole lot of people here in Tupelo who want to say hi, but I'm going to introduce you, okay? All right, let me get you on speakerphone here. Ladies and gentlemen, there's only one guy that uh, in the 50s traveled around with Elvis at every single show playing drums. He's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Country Music Hall of Fame. There will be an Elvis Hall of Fame. He is in it. He was the guy that was the heartbeat of that whole sound uh, and a great friend of all of ours, Mr. DJ Fontana. DJ, DJ! I'm doing great, brother. It is great hearing your voice. So you're in Chicago, are you? Yes, start again. <laughs> Did you ride a bike or take a car up there? Well, it's great hearing your voice. I'm here with Tom Brown. You've heard of him, haven't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got a whole lot of folks here. We're at the uh, Elvis Presley birthplace celebrating his 80th birthday. And uh, uh, I just want to let you know it's an honor to have you as a friend. I, I can't even believe I can say that sentence. And uh, uh, I've had dinner with you. We've all, you've, you've been so gracious with the fans. We've all got to meet you. And uh, DJ, did you ever think that all this time, here we are 2015, that we'd still be having these celebrations for Elvis. Uh, no, you, you just don't think that way. You know, when, you, when you got started, we, we came like six months, you had to go. You know, how did, how did your last record, you know? <laughs> and, and DJ, you told me, I asked you one time, I said, when did you really know, hey, hey, we're over something. You told me a story that you and Scotty were in the back of a car, and you said, can you tell me that story again? The one that you thought, man, we're really on to something here. This this might actually happen. Well, we were down to the cockpit, the old cockpit, and uh, I guess there was 35,000 people there. And he, he came out of the shoot like the football players when we were back in the car. And he just he got like thunder. It was all thunder. You couldn't hear nothing else. He was screaming and hollering, stomping at me. So uh, we know it's kind of, you know, <laughs> and uh, uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, ask you one more question. I'm gonna hand it over to the professional Tom. He they have to talk to you. I'll screw this up if I keep talking. But uh, uh, you got an opportunity to. Uh, who was your favorite drummer? Buddy Rich a lot, right? You know, watch Buddy on tape, you know, whatever he can do it, you know. That, you, you told me a story about when you got to meet him, and one of the neatest things, I'm going to hand you over to Tom, I told you I'd screw this up, I'm just so excited about the story. But it was so cool because when I asked DJ, did you ever get to meet Buddy, and he goes, yeah, we were down in Miami doing the thing with Sinatra. Oh, yeah. and, I, <laughs> and Sinatra worried you a little bit, didn't he? Sinatra worried you a little bit, didn't he? Not, not too much. He, he didn't bother us, not really, you know. But we knew how strict he was or things he wanted, you know. So we just, you know, you go on there, you pay attention and do what you have to do. Yeah, well, I'm going to hand you over to Tom. I just love the fact that he said, well, we were down there doing the Sinatra show when Elvis got back from the Army. Here's Tom for you, DJ. I love you, and thanks for, thanks for doing this. Here's Tom. Okay. I love how we're handing DJ off to me now, see? Uh, DJ Tom Brown here, and um, uh, and you I, you told me you remember this, and I'm sure you probably do. In 1980, uh, when I was at Ole Miss, I had to do a paper on uh, Elvis, and I got to interview DJ. And in the course of the interview, uh, he was here in Tupelo at an at a, uh, Elvis convention, I think. In the course of the interview, uh, DJ told me that um, he would love to go to the birthplace. So I got my mother's uh, 1978 Mercury Marquee, which is bigger than this building. And picked up DJ. Yeah, they are, yeah. 
and, and brought you to the birthplace. And in the meantime, in the interve intervening years, um, we see you every year at the Tupelo Elvis Festival. You've been so gracious to play drums for, for all of us. I've even gotten to, to sing with DJ Montana on drums. Talk, talk to me a little bit, about DJ, about your feelings about Tupelo. You've gotten to know people here in Tupelo, Charlie Watson and people like that. Tell us about what you think about this town. Tupelo, and you heard Elvis talking about Tupelo, and then of course he, he goes to Memphis, and there's, we talked to Wink Martin there a little bit earlier, and he was just talking about uh, what what the South means to entertainers and how they uh, take music from all the different genres, and you grew up in Louisiana, and, and all kinds of music influenced you too, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. We, yeah, actually I started with, with the Louisiana Hayride, and that was country, country, country. That's what, yeah, the music changed with Elvis, and Elvis changed music. DJ, we want to thank you for being here. We're gonna, we got one more question for you from from Jeff Lewis, and uh, we're gonna let you go back uh, to Chicago and try to get home. I was gonna let you know, DJ's in Chicago with Cody Slaughter and Sean Cluster doing the big birthday tour up there. And, and DJ, uh, two quick questions. Uh, a lot, you know, of course, we all love and remember Scotty Moore, but can you tell us what was Bill Black like? And did they, ever, he did they ever get into fights and stuff around the car? Well, no, not really. They, they, they squared off each other, but nobody ever hit each other. And it's my understanding that, that if you're on the road with Elvis for a long time in a car, a certain odor bothered you guys. You tried to get rid of the problem, and Elvis would drive back and get that. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Tom and I, and, and all the folks from Tupelo, ladies and gentlemen, DJ Fontana. Yeah. And, and thank you so much, DJ, and I'll call you when I get home. I love you, and thanks again.